Hello, hello, my cozy friends, and welcome back. Today, I want to talk about and rate all of the cozy games that I played in July. Some of them were kindly gifted to me. Some of them I purchased on my own. I will make sure to label each one so you know which ones I was gifted. And without further ado, let's just get right into it. So the first one on my list, I was kindly gifted by Jandu Soft Studios, and it's called City Limits. I have a lot on my plate right now. We are headed out of town next week, and I'm trying to get ahead on my editing. I'm trying to get ahead on my filming and my script writing and everything. So I had a little bit of a time crunch and since this morning I had to get my oil change, I decided to give Cityscapes a try while getting my oil change and it turned out that that was actually the most perfect time to play it. This game is a cute little puzzle game where you are tasked with making combos and things like that while building a cityscape. Each round is pretty quick and you can rack up points pretty easily and you can even be put on the official leaderboard where thousands of other people are also playing this game. The game was super addicting and it made the time fly so fast while I was getting my oil change. I only have one complaint with this game and that is because I played it on my Switch, I could definitely tell that it was optimized for a mouse and a keyboard, which is totally fine. It was doable and everything was fine, but I do see how having a mouse for some precision clicking would make the game a little bit more easier. And if you're unfamiliar with this game, then let me tell you a little bit about it now. Relax and build cities on a desolate, tranquil island. Plan ahead to cover the island efficiently by combining buildings and cementing your place on a tile. Each turn, an entity spreads, attempting to take over barren or unstable tiles. This game actually took me a few rounds to really understand exactly what I was doing. The tutorial was pretty bare bones, but it was easy enough to figure it out as you went. Once you really get the hang of it, you start to make combos worth a lot of points, and you can go on their official leaderboard. A side note about this is the music, like I said. They stress that this is best played with sound, especially having headphones on, and I totally get why. The music just adds to the ambiance of it all. Also, there is a mode where you can just build a city without it being a puzzle game, just kind of like a relaxing mode if you aren't in the mood to think. Overall, I'm gonna give this one a nine out of 10. The only reason I docked a point off is because I do think that it is probably more optimized with mouse precision clicking, like I said, but it was easy to overcome and it was nothing that really hindered me too much. And objectively, the game just set out what it was meant to do. It's kind of a time waster, and that's exactly what I did with it, uh, totally by accident, by just trying to play it to multitask and get things done, and it turned out to be the perfect place to play it. Anytime that you are waiting or anything like that, you could pick this game up quickly and just play a few rounds, get on the leaderboard, you know, do what you need to do. It's also probably a good game if you want to waste some time at work, not that I'm condoning that. The next one on my list I was also kindly gifted by Snow Castle Games and it's called Akonai Island. And the art style and the description of this game just really caught my eye so I couldn't wait to play it. I was given a short demo of this game that included a few quests and I really enjoyed doing them. The tutorial phase of this game includes a fully voice acted entity of some sort. It sort of gives me Disney vibes in a way. One thing that I really liked about this game is that you can befriend wildlife and each animal has its own set of skills and abilities who can help you navigate the island and complete quests. I really only have one small minuscule complaint about this game. I only wish that you could move the camera angle a little bit because sometimes I felt like I couldn't see quite where I was going or what I was getting myself into because of the camera angle. Having said that though, that is my only complaint and it's a tiny little minuscule of a complaint. Now that I've kind of given you an overview of what I think of the game, let me tell you a little bit about it. So Coney Island is yours to discover. Explore and gather resources, farm the land, craft tools and gear, and build your base or cozy home. Befriend magical creatures and fight monsters with your friends or solo. After waking up on a bizarre island, you will meet mysterious statues and curious creatures, bond with the beasties, and harness their unique and powerful abilities to explore deeper Ikonai Island. And surely there are others who must know about this island. Each of them has their own story to tell, so interact with the island's people, discover their stories, and gain invaluable knowledge. Don't get too comfortable and relaxed though because there are a band of pirates who are trying to make money and exploit the island and you need to stop them before they're able to do it. 
Honestly, this is just a great little exploration game with farming and RPG elements, and you can even play with friends, which is something that I always appreciate. Overall, I'm giving this one an 8 out of 10, but with 10 out of 10 potential. It sounds like from reading some reviews of some of the early demo releases, they have improved a lot to the game. They are listening to feedback, they are changing things and adding things all the time. I do think that the mechanics and art style were really good. The story that I've gotten so far was also pretty good. I really like the unique way that they did the tutorial as well. It is super cute. You collect frogs and every time you you see a frog statue, you put the frog on top and it gives you a little tip or trick on what to do next. Exploring the island was super fun and each time you open up a little part of the island you will find some sort of a quest that you need to do to like build a bridge or knock down a wall. A lot of the times it involves befriending the creatures with their special abilities to help you move along. The game is honestly super cute and I think that when this game fully releases it's going to be fantastic and it's going to be an instant cozy classic so like I said 8 out of 10 right now for the demo with the potential to be a 10 out of 10 game. The next one on my list is going down as my absolute favorite game of the month without fail. It is definitely my favorite and it is called Lakeburg Legacies. I have been anticipating this game for so long. I have talked about it in multiple videos and I finally got to play it. I bought this one on my own. It was not gifted, but I bought it. I played it and wow, it has literally exceeded my expectations. This game is so much better than I ever thought it could be. I really thought that this was going to be a game where maybe I got five to ten hours out of the game and by by the time that happened, I might just end up shelving it, maybe picking it up later down the line, but basically getting everything that I needed to get out of the game and moving on to a new one. I could not have been more wrong. This game has so much more depth to it. It's very unassuming when you watch the trailers or start playing the game. You can't believe that there's actually this much to the game. I really thought that this game was going to be really easily played with very minimal effort and that maybe there was only going to be a few mechanics that you had to deal with and that the game would be a breeze to fly through again I could not have been more wrong. This game has some real strategy to it and there are several different ways that you could go about it and I highly recommend watching some tutorial videos before you step into it because I made the mistake of just downloading it and playing it on stream and I was absolutely awful at the game because I was not expecting the level of depth that was in this game. Lakeburg Legacies is a social based village management sim focused on pairing up your townsfolk to make the most effective and most loved up couples. Think you've made the perfect match? Then follow your families generation after generation and watch their lineages blossom or wilt. See what effects they have on your realm and they actually stress not to get too wrapped up in the love aspect or your villagers will become unhappy and starve and they were not kidding. I was playing on stream and I started losing villagers left and right. It became super chaotic and I was in complete panic mode. So they are not kidding about the you need to keep an eye on everybody and make sure that they are happy and fed and have jobs. You cannot just solely focus on the love portion of this game because it will bite you in the butt later and I found that out live on stream. Another thing about this game is that some of your villagers will actually start having affairs with one another. It will become super chaotic but in all the best ways. I actually had some of the funniest moments I've ever had on stream while playing this game. There are so many little hidden easter eggs and jokes and things like that that will pop up. You will also get these weird random events that pop up and some of them are so funny and at first First, I was just picking all of the safe scenarios with each event, but then the scenarios started repeating and I asked my chat, should I just go for chaos? And they completely agreed. So I started to pick out the not so safe options and let me tell you that you are rewarded with some really funny, really clever gameplay and you're absolutely going to love it. So when you play this game, it is okay to choose a little bit of chaos. And I am seriously, honestly, seriously, for real, giving this one a 10 
10 out of 10. The game exceeded everything that I thought it was going to be and more. This game is so in-depth and it's got such replayability because there are so many different ways and scenarios that you could go. Plus, there is also just beating your previous score of how long it took you to crown a sovereign. And not only that, but you can choose chaos, you can choose to be safe, or maybe a mixture of the two. One little side note that I want people to notice if they haven't played this game yet and you decide to pick it up, pay attention to the pickup line quotes that are above each bachelor and bachelorette's profile picture. Some of them are so funny. We were cracking up so hard on stream. So before you go and pick out anything else with your bachelors, read the pickup lines because I guarantee they will make you laugh. Not all of the games that make it onto my monthly I played this last month list are new games. Sometimes they're older games that I just decided to randomly pick up. And let me tell you that my next one on my list, I wanted to love this game so much and it sat on my backlog for so long and I was thoroughly disappointed. <laughs> the game is called Typo Man. And the reason that I even downloaded this game in the first place is because I wanted a game with a creepy atmosphere. I kind of wanted a 2D side scroller puzzle adventure. I was basically looking for something kind of like on the little nightmares inside limbo type of thing. And Typo Man kept coming up again and again and again on all of these lists that I was finding. And I downloaded it when it was on sale and it sat on my backlog for a very long time. And I finally picked it up last month. And if you're unfamiliar with Typo Man, let me just give you a little rundown of this. And I want to preface this by saying that the game has a 9 out of 10 on Steam with overwhelmingly positive reviews. Me not liking this game seems to be sort of just a me thing. So going into detail about this one, Typo Man is a puzzle platformer. You slip into the role of a character made of letters, struggling to make your way through a very dark and hostile world. Despite your small stature, you have a powerful gift. You can craft words which will have an effect on the environment. But choose your words wisely. They can either be a blessing or a curse. Let me tell you about some of the things that I really enjoyed about this game. It was unique. The art style was very good. The game was reasonably priced. The things that I did not like about this game, though, are the word puzzles. I don't know what it was, but they really kind of turned me off. It sort of gave me a Origami King vibe where I loved the game and the atmosphere and the aesthetic, but I kept having to do these like really stupid puzzles to like beat every character that I ran into. That was giving me the same vibe with this game because every time that I would come to an area where I had to solve a puzzle, it wasn't like, hey, move this thing over here or do this or do that. No, 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 no. These were word puzzles that popped up. They were basically like word jumbles and you had to figure out what the word jumble was to like move on to the next area. And I was just not having it. It just wasn't my thing. I will give it 10 out of 10 on uniqueness, but yeah, it just wasn't for me. And this is definitely a new and unique take on a puzzle platformer. So if that's something that you're interested in, you should definitely pick it up. But unfortunately, I'm going to give this one a four out of 10. Okay, so maybe you had never heard of Typo Man and you're like, Sue, why are you including this on the list? Well, I guarantee that you've heard of the next game on my list. It is called Dave the Diver. This is a game that I hadn't heard of. Nobody was talking about it. And then one day I heard a little blurb about Dave the Diver and then I went on YouTube and everybody was talking about it. I went to Instagram and threads and everybody was talking about this game. Everybody was streaming this game. And I'm just like, where did this game come from? This game that like nobody was talking about yesterday and now today the entire internet's personality became Dave the Diver. So of course I had to download it. And although I find this impossible to be true, there are probably some people out there who don't know what Dave the Diver is. So let me tell you about it. Dave the Diver is a casual single player adventure RPG featuring deep sea exploration and fishing during the day and sushi restaurant management at night. Join Dave and his quirky friends as they seek to uncover the secrets of the mysterious blue hole. This is another one of those games where you just keep playing and playing and you keep saying, I'm just going to go through one more day and then I'll end it. And then you end up playing for six to seven years. Society could have collapsed outside, but you're too busy running your virtual sushi bar to care. This game literally has everything. It has story, exploration, mini games, and you're free to play at your own pace. Before I downloaded the game, I read some reviews and I just really want to share the best review that I've ever seen for any game ever. The reviewer said, imagine paying 250k to see the bottom of the ocean when you could have just played this game. I literally became deceased after reading that review. I mean, honestly, it had it all. It was topical. I laughed. I cried. 
guide. I shared it in my YouTube video. I'm going to give that review a 10 out of 10 because man, oh man, was that funny. And honestly, the review perfectly fits the goofiness of this game as well. So I just felt like the review was amazing and I wish that you could pin it to the top so everybody could see it. I'm going to give this one a 9 out of 10 because the game is absolutely amazing. My one little complaint for it is that the serotonin wears off a little bit once you play that gameplay loop over and over and over again. But that has happened with a lot of games like that. And the game is only $20 and I got like 15 hours of play out of it. So I can't really complain too much. The next one on my list is another one that I was not gifted and did not come out last month, but I just happened to play it last month and it's called Eight Doors. I was recommended this game on Reddit because I am always trying to find new Metroidvanias to play because they're my absolute favorite style of game. And when I looked it up and saw the art style, I absolutely fell in love with it and I instantly downloaded it. Unfortunately, this game did not live up to my expectations for many reasons. The thing is, is that this game was beautiful and the story was captivating, but there was just something that I just didn't like about the game. I think it has something to do with the clunky mechanics and the game just didn't run as smoothly as I thought it should. Before I go into like why I rated it and what I rated it, let's just tell you a little bit about the game. In this one, you're going to play as a girl that has entered the realm of the afterlife in search of her father's soul and guide her through the eight doors of purgatory to solve the mysteries that lie deep within. There is literally nothing about the description of this game that makes me think that I would not wholeheartedly enjoy this game, but I absolutely love the story and the art style. The mechanics to me just weren't great, and I think that was really hindering my enjoyment of this game. I do think that I am going to give this one another try though because the reviews are just so good and I just can't believe that I didn't like it. I have a pretty big road trip coming up so I think I'm going to play it in the car and we will see if I like it any better and if so I will update my score on my YouTube channel. But right now I'm going to give this one a 5 out of 10. The art style and the story are the only two things carrying this game and there is so many other things that are just bringing it down unfortunately. But I will let you know after I play a little bit longer. Garden Inn is a game that I was kindly gifted by Bonus Stage Publishing. I didn't know much about this game at all but I looked into it after I was offered a key and I thought that the game sounded super cozy and super cute so I told them that I would definitely play it and let you know what I think. When I started playing it I was met with the reality that this is actually an idle game which I had no idea going into it. I thought that it was like a gardening simulator but this is more like a idle game that you have in the background on your computer and maybe you go in and fiddle with some things and then go back to working for a little bit and come back and see how your plants are doing and you kind of continue doing this because a lot of the plants will grow over hours or days and so this is definitely not something that you're just going to sit down and play. It's more like something that you're just always playing in the background and there is nothing wrong with that. It was just not quite what I was expecting and at first I was actually a little bit disappointed that this is how the gameplay went but once I had it up in my background and I was filming and editing and writing scripts and making thumbnails, I found it to be such a great little break because usually what happens is I get burnt out and I don't even know what I'm doing anymore and I get away from my computer for a long time and I have to literally drag myself back to the computer. But instead what I would do is open up my garden in, check on things, water things, maybe rearrange a little bit. And it was the perfect way to kind of just re set in the moment and then go back to working again. And since I do such a bad job at describing games, I am just going to read the Steam description for you. Chill in the peaceful world of Garden Inn, a charming sandbox game. Grow unique plants, discover new seeds, and design your dream garden. With its serene atmosphere, you'll find yourself saying just one more plant, dive in for a quick relaxation, or lose yourself for hours in this cozy journey. And let me tell you that that description fits the game to an absolute T. I may or may not have also downloaded this game at work because it is a great way to just let off some frustrations by just going into your cozy little world and planting 
planting some plants, checking on the ones that you've already planted, and like I said, decorating and getting new items and all of that good stuff. Finding out that you unlocked something else, like another room or another item. The whole game is just absolutely perfect for what the game actually is. So if you're looking for a game where you're going to be actively gardening and constantly doing things, this probably isn't the game for you. But if you want a game that is just idle in your background and helps you pass a little bit of time while maybe you're waiting for something or you're at work or you just need a little break to reset, then this is a perfect game for you. I am going to give this game a 9 out of 10 because it is absolutely conveying exactly what they set out to do. It is super calming, super relaxing. It's a great way to just step away for a moment and get lost in your own little world. My only thing with this is that I feel like this would make a great mobile game so when you're frustrated in line at like the DMV you could like pop this open and just kind of lose yourself a little bit. But unfortunately I looked it up and it does not look like it's available on mobile but it would be a perfect mobile mobile game. But it is available on PC and you can play it yourself and I highly recommend that you do because I guarantee that you will love this game. The last game on my list is also an older Metroidvania that I just happened to pick up last month because it was on sale and it's called Eterna Noctis. I will say that this is the closest Metroidvania that I have found to actually filling the hole that Hollow Knight has left. This game is actually pretty freaking good. The mechanics are really good. The art style is awesome. The map is huge. It has a huge focus on exploration and each map has kind of like its own vibe and aesthetic. My only complaint that I really have about this game is that the story is just not like grabbing me. It's not making me like invested in the game but that is not something that is a make or break for me when a game has a good story I mean that's just a bonus but that's just not something that I like need to have to be able to enjoy a game as long as everything else in the game is good I'm going to assume that if you watch my channel you probably have no idea what this game is I mean maybe you do I'm not sure but let me just go through it with you this game is considered a metroidvania that combines intense platform gameplay with enemies that will get the most out of each player. Explore, recover your power, and help the King of Darkness in an epic adventure only suitable for players who want a real challenge. Since this is a Metroidvania, it is not linear, and you will spend a lot of time exploring and backtracking and discovering new things. And let me tell you that this map is huge. It is huge. I couldn't even believe it when I kept opening things up. Finally, I actually just googled the map because I wanted to see what the entire map looked like, and it is gigantic. It very much reminds me of Hollow Knight. And like I said a little bit earlier, each part of the map has its own aesthetic. All of the different sections are very different from each other, which I totally appreciate. And if you're strictly a cozy gamer, this game is probably not going to be for you. But if you do enjoy a good platforming challenge type game, you will love this one. I guarantee it. And I got it on sale for super cheap. I'm going to give this one a 7 out of 10 and not to beat a dead horse but if I wouldn't have played the masterpiece of Hollow Knight, I probably would have given it a much higher score. But unfortunately, Hollow Knight has ruined every game for me. And so the game is going to get a 7 out of 10. The game isn't bad. Um, but it didn't particularly like just grab me where I just want to keep playing the game over and over and over again. Of course, I am going to finish the game because I am enjoying it for that aspect, but I just don't see myself falling in love and buying merch and t-shirts and figurines and all of that stuff and trying to replay it over and over and over again. I just don't see that happening. So that is my reasoning for giving it a seven out of 10. Well, we have made it to the end of my list. Thank you so much if you've followed along this far. And if you like content like this, then you should definitely subscribe to me because this is exactly what I do. I also try to live stream one to three times a week and we have a really good time. And if you liked this video, I would love it if you would leave a like before you go and I will see you guys in the next one.